So what, when we talk about hitting the reset button, that's what we mean. We're opening a clearing in the forest to insert those short cycle plants again so I can have another harvest of corn, so I can have another harvest of squash, another harvest of bean, another harvest of cassava. Forget about sustainability. You want to enrich ecosystems. Every bean is equipped to live a positive energetic balance. Keep it pruned. We are cultivating abundance. Not a problem to cut down trees. The problem is not planting them. What is up, my brothers and sisters? Welcome to the Ego Forge Academy channel. Today, I'm going to give you a bit of an update on a agroforestry system we've been resetting around here. So the concept of resetting an agroforestry system is this. We work with succession of species. What that means is that we plant at the same time species of different life cycles. For example, I can have in an agroforestry system, I can plant at the same day maize, squash and beans, which are all plants that have a three to five month cycle. With them, I might have cassava, yams, and taro, which all have about, you know, from eight to 12 month cycle. Then I can have bananas, papayas, pineapples, which last for, you know, from 18 to 36 months. And then I can have long cycle trees, ranging all the way from you know, three, four, five years, all the way up to 50, 60, 70, 100 years life cycles. So, and th this is how things develop. You know, I can plant them all at the same day, but since they have these different life cycles, they don't harm each other. On the contrary, the short cycle plants will create the environment for the longer cycle plants to live in. But what happens is this. Once I've got trees established in the system, you know, I've got big banana plants, I've got big papayas, big trees, eucalyptus, and all the, the tree species that I might have in my system, the system is completely shaded for short cycle plants such as corn, beans, squash, which are plants that, although some of them do tolerate a bit of shade, they like to grow in the clearing of the forest. So what, when we talk about hitting the reset button, that's what we mean. We're opening a clearing in the forest to insert those short cycle plants again, so I can have another harvest of corn, so I can have another harvest of squash, another harvest of bean, another harvest of cassava. And this is what happened here. So I'm gonna give you a bit of a tour around it. So first things first, this is what the system looked like. It was uh, really messy. The system was impl implemented two years ago. Uh, you know, we've got some big banana trees. We've got pigeon peas. We've got castor beans, lots of prickly pear around. These ones have been pruned recently, but you can see that it's a mess. There's all this, this unorganized, organic matter on the plants. This is a, an important concept, right? We're, we always want to optimize the resources available. And right now I've got a huge mess of plants and they have accumulated resources. And in order to redistribute these resources to the plants that I want to grow, I need to prune them all and organize the material on the soil like this. Check out this custard apple and a nice cashew, and this one is Senna Spectabilis. Um, this system actually lacks more trees because the trees we initially planted didn't um, sprout so well, so we did recently also plant some more trees. So what we did basically is we took out all this mess we pruned everything and we left the field like this you can see the prickly pear has been properly pruned as well and we prepared some small nests for our maize and squash 
and also pigeon pee. So this is what the system looks like now. And I'm still coming with some more organic material to cover the rest of the soil because you can see that there's a lot of bare soil, right? Another thing I did is I replanted some prickly pear where they, because some of them were way too spaced apart. I like to have prickly pears every 20 or 30 centimeters. I love prickly pear because they don't shade too much the system, you know, so I can um, I can just prune them back and they, they're not shading other plants so much. And so I can have I can have them in the system and just periodically prune them and they resprout very well. And uh, if by any chance at any moment I don't want to produce any more maize cassava, these short cycle plants, I can just allow the prickly pear to grow to its full size. You know, this plant can reach up to two or three meters and it does tolerate a bit of shade from the tree. So it's it's a perfect plant for having in between your rows in a semi-arid climate. And like I've talked about in other videos, although I'm not exactly in a semi-arid climate, we have from 800 to 1,200 millimeters of rain here, but I'm bordering the semi-arid of Brazil and we suffer a lot from the droughts. So the, the rain is really concentrated on a few days. Last year, for example, we had 836 millimeters of water, but over 70% of that rain fell in seven days throughout the year. So it's pretty much a semi-arid climate. You know, I spent spent most of last year without any significant rain. So I invest a lot in these plants that will be green and will grow regardless of what's going on with the weather. So that's why I love them so much. Let's go back to the system. So now what we have here is we've got a little nest spaced every one meter with maize and pigeon pea. I'm going to go right ahead in about one week and I'm going to plant squash in the central row. You can see that I've got three rows. Can you see the three rows? Let me try to show it to you. I've got my fingers here. There you go. Three rows. Whoosh, three rows. I'm going to plant squash only in the central row because then this, I'm going to conduct the main stem of the squash to to go to walk all over the central row and the lateral branches will go to the side so i'm going to have the squash covering this whole area and take care of my trees you know we've got some pretty cashews around you know they look very beautiful now that we're managing the system they're gonna really grow a lot and these banana plants they're pretty pretty skinny as well i hope that with this this little work that we're doing they're gonna get better these papayas also looked pretty bad but now they're gonna they're gonna gain a bit of a of a stronger body and we've got some chili here check it out chili is an amazing plant you know we we do lots of seed bombs you know about that right we plant lots of seed bombs this is the a, a clear uh sign of a seed bomb we've got three papayas we've got you know one cashew plant we've got a, a custard apple down here we've got a stinky feet here so everything is sprouting on the same place i always like to put chili with it because you know chili is a crop that withstands quite a decent amount of shade most chilies are actually they occupy the the understory of the forest, right? They're, they're from the, the low strata, the low layer of the forest. And it can't be, a, you know, a really closed forest, but they thrive very, very well in the shade of other plants. So I, I really like having them around. And yeah, these banana plants, they... The, wait, what happened here? All right. These banana plants, they will be taken down as we plant these plots. Because you can see we planted this plot and this plot. And then we have another one, two, three, 
four, five plots to plant. When you want to have constant production, it's always interesting to have plots of the same size so that you can gradually plant. So I'm planting two plots every month here. So I'm going to have maize and I'm going to have squash all the time. So this is really important for organizing your work and and being able to have produce throughout the whole year. I know that's not possible for you guys that live in temperate and subtropical zones because of the weather. But still, for those of you who don't, who live in the tropical areas where we can grow stuff, you know, all uh, any time of the year, it's really important to have these plots so that you can, you know, every every week or every two weeks or every month, you're planting a small plot. This gives a, a good rhythm for the for the work. Now this banana plant here, I decided to leave it because it's uh, it's got a, you know, a bit of a bunch. It's a very, it's a ridiculous bunch, but um, I mean it's going to be good to harvest a small banana. Also, it's in the since it's right on the edge of the system, it doesn't, and not only on the edge, but on the south edge, it really doesn't have so much of a negative impact on my system. So I decided to to let it be. But you can see the other the other banana plants, they were all taken down and I only left the small ones. And the same will happen to those other rows as the system progresses to the other plots. So, that's it. I'm going to keep you updated on how this uh, the system goes. In a couple of weeks, it should already look pretty nice. And I'm going to be coming in with uh, with some fertilizer for my maize. And um, I'll keep you updated. If you haven't yet, do subscribe to our channel. Oh, yeah. I'd like to give a big shout out to Mr. Pete Canaries, um, who mentioned us in one of uh, his last videos. He's a he's an amazing guy. He's got a great YouTube channel, and uh, he brought lots lot of lots of subscribers to our channel. I hope you're all enjoying the, our videos. And yeah, so I'll see you next week. Oh, by the way, if you haven't heard, we're doing a live Q and A with him on the 9th of May with Pete Canaris. We're gonna be in his channel, and so make sure you you write down the date, the 9th of May. You know, be in tune in our channel and with his channel because we're going to be um, reminding you all of the of this live Q&A. It's going to be a, a great event. So I'll catch you all in the next video. Thank you for watching. This is Felipe for the AgroForge Academy and I'm signing out.